Once you're done stitching buttonholes on the Foff Creative Icon, the next natural step would probably be to sew on a button. So stitch number 19 in menu 1.3 is just that. Now if you heard a little click when I touched it, that is one of the stitches that the feed dogs automatically lower for this particular stitch. You'll also notice that the stitch width is also predetermined at four millimeters wide. So how does the machine know that this button holes that are in it is four millimeters wide? Well, that's kind of an optical illusion because about 99% of all buttons have the same width for that particular width of stitch. Now you're gonna run into a button or two along your way that will require a slightly wider or narrower zigzag to get through it, and you can alter it there. And the number that you see right beside it here, where it says times eight, that's how many times back and forth the stitch will go between the holes. We also see that there is no foot recommended for this particular technique, but you do need some stabilizer, something at least to support fabric that is not very heavy or thick. So here's how it's gonna work. We're gonna take the foot off, because we require no foot. We're gonna make sure that the IDT is not engaged, so unengage it. And then if you kinda look right now, you can see that the needle is leaning a little bit to the left. So guess what? You wanna make sure that the needle is hand-turned into one of the left needle holes first. And once it kinda sinks into the fabric, this is where you can kind of set those holes to be nice and parallel to you. Lower the presser foot and then hand turn for testing one extra stitch to the right. And if it goes into the hole, you know you can start the machine, whether you use your foot control or the start stop button. You can go ahead and stitch. Remember the eight times, it's already over. And you can use the thread cutter. It will pick a hole to cut that in. Now, did you notice for this particular four holer, I stitched the front two holes first, and then I'll move to the back side. If this button is a little on the smaller side, I have been known to turn it around and then stitch those holes from this direction. But for this one, there's enough of the back of the button for it to actually um, hold onto as it sits itself down onto the edge of that button. Just take that two stitches and then the swing and test and then stitch. It really makes sewing on buttons a lot easier. Now let me show you with our FOF Stitching Cosmos online course, where we actually had some fun with sewing on the buttons, and they're in incorporated with sewing on some tassels. Those tassels were stitched down with a bar tack underneath, and then the buttons stitched on last. We did find that actually we stitched in all four directions to create the box that you're seeing as part of the decorative addition to sewing these buttons in place. So next time you need to sew on a button, don't reach for a hand needle. Needle, just take your foot off your sewing machine and pick stitch number 19.